Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to this week's edition of the Backmarkers F1 Power Rankings. Coming to you after Austin, Texas, the United States Grand Prix, round 19. Only two more to go in the 2019 F1 season in a race where we saw Lewis Hamilton clinch his sixth world title. Congratulations, Lewis, and to Mercedes as well. And an interesting top 10 for us. We were mentioning in our recap that the race wasn't as good as no. we were expecting, but we had some good performances from the midfield, which saw some movement in our rankings, and a driver or two that have exited the rankings, and one that makes his return. And that driver that made his return to our rankings this week is number 10, Lando Norris. Yeah, we all cried when he came out of our top 10 last yeah, week. It was uh, pretty upsetting. It was really upsetting. <laughs> I took three days to recover. But, uh, three days, wow. Yeah, it was hard. But Lando is back uh, with a fantastic performance. He topped a F1 session for the first time in his career. And I believe that's the first time Mercedes has topped a session since 2014, McLaren. 2015. McLaren. Yeah, McLaren. 2015. The first time, Mercedes. Did I say McLaren? Mercedes? <laughs> yeah. I say Mercedes? Yeah. Sorry, McLaren. First um, time, probably something other than a top three team as I in two years, I want to say. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Probably more than that. And not in a wet session. Yeah. No, it was in a dry session too. So, and in a qualifying session to make it better, not even a practice session. So, yeah, well done to Lando for topping Q1 and getting the fastest time. And then... Having a good race as well, a good qualifying session, all around decent time for Lando, and he returns back into our top 10. Agreed. And how about those overtakes he made on Fell oh. and Ricardo? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and you know what I like about his driving? He's a very clean driver. Always gives the other driver space, to, you know, if you know he's going to be passed. He's, Always gives the driver space. He's a very nice man. Yeah. Very nice just, man. Happy just, 20th birthday to yeah, Lando. Yeah, by the way, it's, yeah, it's coming Happy up. Happy birthday, Lando. So number nine is actually his teammate then, Carlos Sainz. And Carlos does drop a, a couple of places in our rankings this week. It's been a little bit tough for Carlos because it's not that he hasn't put in the performances yet. Yeah. It's just the fact that the car and the race pace hasn't been there. We saw that in Mexico. We saw that in this race as well. But it was still a double points finish for McLaren. Mm -hmm. It was. It's also, I think, other uh, drivers that we have ahead of him just doing a little bit better to edge him out. Right uh, in our top ten, and I don't think it has nothing to do with what science has done wrong. It's just what other drivers have done right, mm -hmm. and uh, science has been very consistent, but uh, does slide a little bit in our rankings to nine. Yeah, and did finish just one place behind his teammate in P seven at the U S Grand Prix. But of course, Carlos's last five races, last five races, by the way, accounting Singapore, Russia, Japan, Mexico, and then the United States. I can't believe Singapore's five races ago. Yeah. Right, it's crazy. It's been wild yeah i can't believe italy was on our list for that long i know <laughs> um so then moving on into number eight this week the guy who loves austin texas i don't know if there's a driver out there that loves america more than daniel ricardo well he does have a house there does he actually he does have a house in that reno money right yeah he has a house <laughs> you can have a house anywhere realistically that's true because <laughs> he, he said he likes the weather it's hot he's from don't blame australia him. it's true I know he's from Australia. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lives in Monaco. Yeah, well, no, he, he, I mean, I there's a trend the, going here. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of creepy like creatures in Australia. I would, I, I understand why he doesn't want to live there. There's some in there's some. L.A. too. If you haven't, uh... <laughs> is he at L.A.? No, I thought he had yeah. a place in Texas. I'm pretty sure he has a place in L.A. Is it L.A.? Well, he oh. spends a lot of time in L.A. Oh, I'm wrong. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, he makes it. Yeah, Daniel Ricardo is, <laughs> is up to P8. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is what we're getting at here. Um, because of his helmet. Because of his helmet, yes. Uh, no, a beautiful race by Daniel Ricciardo once again and uh, showing how how well he's been doing the second half of the season. Yeah, it's true. I really like his last couple of five races that he's had here. Um, obviously, he had a P6 in, in Japan and then another P6 here in the United States. And we're seeing the old Ricciardo. We mentioned this in our recap podcast. The, the under-controlled, late-breaking overtakes... Mm -hmm. He hasn't really made any big mistakes in the last five races, has been outperforming his teammate as well in the last two to three races. So I really like to see Ricardo fighting for position again. It's a shame that he can't be fighting for race wins and podiums uh, again. Mm -hmm. um, that That's a real disappointment, but that's a car's fault, not his fault. But at the end of the day, still good enough for eighth on our list. Yep. Yep. So in P7. Oh. 
I don't have my glasses on. Sorry, I, can't I can read it for you. Sorry. <laughs> I always try and build a suspense. Never happens. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's Sergio Perez. It is Sergio uh, Perez. It is. Yeah, he carries over his impressive performance since the later half of the season. I don't even think it's the last five races. I think there was one maybe not top 10 finish he's had since the end of the summer break. But that was Italy. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, he's just been non form, uh, making his overtakes look really easy on other drivers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he just maybe had one incident towards the end of the race, but other than that, yeah, but that was, wasn't his fault. Danny yeah, Kivyat, the torpedo Kivyat, came right? back once again, and that's what four, or five two races, races in a row. row. <laughs> Is it two? I, I know it's, it's two for sure. Is it I three? Say it's three. <laughs> I want to say it's three. Torpedo's back. <laughs> Danny, da- Daddy Danny. What did they call? What did I call earlier in the year? Daddy, yeah, Daddy Danny. That nickname father, is gone. Fa- gone. Father, father Danny. Daniel. That's right. You guys were not okay with Daddy Daniel. That's right. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks for reminding me. <laughs> that's right. Father Daniel uh, is now gone, and it's back to the torpedo. Um, but Perez from pit lane to P10, another fantastic race for racing points, and the Mexican uh, coming off uh, again a nice, great. Mexican Grand Prix, some Grand Prix. He, he had some great racing with um, with Lance Stroll as well. Yes. You know, uh, two spots behind him. Yeah, they had some great team racing there as well, uh, keeping those positions intact. So yeah. So then in P six, Sebastian Vettel, and disappointing race for him in Austin, Texas, because of obviously the suspension failure. Yeah, had that kachow moment. Lightning going over, yeah, <laughs> going over turn eight, uh, and then nine with the broken suspension. I don't think that there would have been much coming out of this race for Vettel and Ferrari. I think it would have been P6. Yeah, yeah, they were struggling a lot, but he did get P2 in qualifying, and he's really continued this strong run of form, uh, and qualifying has been a big improvement for him in the last three races yeah. or so over Charles Leclerc. Uh, obviously, he won't be able to scratch back that uh, deficit in qualifying overall in the head-to-head, but nonetheless, it's good for 2020 to be able to be a little bit more comfortable with the car, uh, and I think that Vettel right now... Sixth position is probably where we put him because the other driver's ahead of him as well. And, and that's the thing always with the driver that gets a DNF. It isn't his fault, but at the same time, you can't really put him again ahead of guys that finished the race and had a good race in the yeah. end. Yeah. I mean, he still has an opportunity to take uh, third, third position in uh, the championship. If, you know, if Charlotte Leclerc doesn't have uh, top 10 finishes, I want to say. Right. Yeah. It's a little bit of a gap now because of that DNF, but yeah, uh, yeah you never know what can happen, right? For sure. So getting into our top five is a Dutchman at Max Verstappen, who's coming in fifth this week. Yeah. yeah. Podium finish for Max. He loves the U.S. Grand Prix. Yeah. Yeah. You know, great qualifying session as well. Yeah. And uh, he had a great qualifying session in Mexico. Yeah. But, of course, had that penalty. I mean, which, which despite that, we'll give he, him still a did, yeah, he, still, uh, he still did really well in that. Yeah. Podium in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's... You wasn't as lull. yeah, well, had, had a little bit of a lull. Wasn't as consistent up until after maybe Sing- after Singapore, maybe around Singapore. I think he picked it back up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he stepped up uh, after the you know the few engine upgrades and uh, penalties. He's really come back into it and really shown the form that we saw um, from Hungary to uh, not Hungary from Austria to Hungary. So he had a really clean weekend in, yeah. in the U.S. and probably. Got as much out of the car as he could. Yeah, almost got P two towards the end. Uh, a couple if, more there, laps. if there was yeah one or two more laps, I think he would have had it. But yeah, for sure. So in fourth place this week on our list is the second Ferrari driver, Charles Leclerc, and Leclerc has been kind of making his way a little bit down in our list. Was obviously like we mentioned last week too. Was rarely red hot after the summer break. And then since then has cooled down quite significantly. And when we look at the last five races, it's kind of fallen apart for him a little bit, especially in Japan. In Mexico, it didn't really work out for him. Obviously, in Singapore and Russia, there was the team drama that was going on. But we've really seen him kind of take a a step back and and fall on an even level playing field with Vettel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he's still got a couple podiums in the last five races, which is a decent result, but it hasn't been the same Leclerc like we saw in Belgium and Italy, for example. Yeah. No, a hundred percent it hasn't, but, uh, he has still been better than Vettel, uh, which is why he's higher in our power rankings. He's but. just, he's been consistent. <laughs> yeah. Where Vettel has not been because he's consistent. You yeah, know, he'll have a good qualifying fair. session, won't carry it through the race where Charles Leclerc, you know, we'll have a great qualifying session and he'll he'll still be consistent and get, you know, top five finishes in his races. So. Yeah. And Leclerc's also been able to finish all five races in the yeah. last five, whereas Vettel's had two DNFs. Yeah. Again, not his fault, but still, you, you got to rank him higher than his teammate. So in our podium places this week, at third place, we have Alex Albon, a driver that's been 
pretty consistently holding on to P3 uh, since the last couple of races, actually. His seven straight top six finish. And one was really impressive here at the United States Grand Prix was obviously had the contact early on at lap one, came back all the way to finish fifth, which is pretty impressive for yeah. the young rookie. From yeah, P20 that, to P5. That's so. something Max Verstappen does. Yeah. You know, they, that's, that's something that Sebastian Vettel does, that future world champions and former world champions do. And it was a fantastic race from Albon. Um, and something that we want to see from him down the line that yeah. could secure him a Red Bull seat for next year. Yeah, I mean, there was, you know, he didn't have some great overtakes, but he had very, he had overtakes that he made it look really easy. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what just carried him through. He knew exactly what to do with each turn to make it, to make it happen, to get that, uh, to get his grid position up to P5. So, um, puts him in the top three, what, two weeks in a row? I think, uh, uh, I think you're right. Three weeks two, in a row Three now. weeks in a row now, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah okay. since, uh, since Japan, we've put him in there. Okay. Good for him. Good yeah. for Alex. It's first time in America ever. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> He's never been to America <laughs> yeah. before. That's right. Pretty good job then. Yeah. <laughs> first time on yeah. the track too. Yeah. yeah so exactly. Equally impressive. So our last two places and one that's deserved for the champions of 2019 and Mercedes does occupy our top two places. At number two though, we have the US Grand Prix race winner and that's Valtteri Bottas. And Valtteri, yeah, put that little finish. Yeah, that was very nice. On that was... Uh, it was more Italian, but uh, was it? Oh, yeah, but I'll go with it. Just yeah. go with it. It was right. sounded good. Run with it. <laughs> it sounded good. Valtteri, he has two wins, one pole, one podium in his last five races, and a very impressive pole, mm. to say the least, at this track, Circuit of the Americas, which has been a Hamilton track. Yeah. And apparently, it's his first time ever leading uh, the Texas Grand Prix. That's he right. Had never led a minute right. before, so it's, and he led pretty much the entire race, except for maybe like 10, 12 laps. So. Yeah, and he had a nice charge come back uh, yeah. over Hamilton and a beautiful pass to take the lead. Um, as you mentioned, two wins. It now gives him four wins for the season, his best ever in F1. And it's been a good season for Valtteri. Um, We'll have to keep improving if you want to see him win maybe a world championship next year. I do want to point out that whenever Valtteri's in second and he's going to be taking first position and everybody knows it's going to happen, he has to fight for that position. Yeah, I know, eh? Where, wherever it's Lewis Hamilt Hamilton, he Valtteri, just gets, it's James. Yeah, he just gets <laughs> that position. So again, he he fights he fights for his uh, his number his number one finishes. Yeah. So I got a lot of respect for Valtteri. Yeah. I really like him and wish better of him i wish he got better on the stick a couple times yeah absolutely but nonetheless a great season for for Sorry, I smashed my now knee you on injured the over there? <laughs> <laughs> my goodness just trying to play it cool but <laughs> everything's falling apart over here it's good it's tell good. you after 10 o'clock it gets <laughs> off yeah, the rails yeah, i don't know what happens on this podcast yeah. <laughs> so then our number one for this week and a very obvious choice it is the six time that's right six time world champion Lewis Hamilton, and the last five races, he's got two wins and a podium, and then obviously clinching the championship, and we talked about this before, that since the summer break, even though he hasn't had a pole position since Germany, he's still been leading the championship, mm -hmm. although it seems like the field has gotten closer, but he's still at the top at number one, and what more can you say from the driver who has won the most races this season, and essentially, we knew he was going to win the championship since probably Spain. But now we just yeah, have to confirm yeah. it, right? <laughs> no, 100%. Um, and I don't think there's anyone else who could even come close right now. We, we saw how our top position was close for a long time. Um, I think Lewis has it pretty solidified right now uh, at the number one spot in our power rankings. And well deserves so as well. Uh, as you mentioned, you have a lot of things you mentioned. And uh, now six-time world champion for the Brit. And the masseuse of the tires the, again Yes, the masseuse. Yep. Yes, he's massaging those tires making the, the hard tire last a little bit longer yeah. than we all expected. Valtteri was getting a little you know, bit edgy at some point. You know who needed a massage? Vettel's rear suspension. So. <laughs> <Ka> Ciao. <laughs> so maybe Lewis can help, can help Vettel on that. There you have it. That's our list for round number 19 after the United States Grand Prix. We always would love to hear what you think of our list and comment your own list down below too. We'd be interested to see um, how different it is or how similar it is to, to our list below. And like we said, we've only got three more editions of the power rankings coming up. We've obviously got the one after Brazil, Abu Dhabi, and then our big whole, as, as you would call it, full season power rankings yes. yeah. at the end of the year for 2019. So looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing you for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Until then, bye for now.